is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to talk about Nicosil coatings. So, a lot of cylinders nowadays uh, have Nicosil coatings. This is generally starting to push out and replace cylinder liners. Uh, so, Nicosil is a actual trade name, it's a Mali, a Mala, Mala, is it Mala? Mali? Mala? Mala? Germany. <laughs> Anyway, um, so they developed this uh, predominantly, if I remember rightly, from I read an article years ago about it, and it was developed by them for the uh, Wankel. It was basically de developed. It is in the late sixties, and it was developed for um, the housings, the rotary housings. The problem was, is if you had to put a liner inside there it would be a pain in the ass. The other thing is they needed quite tight tolerances um, and tight clearances. Now there is a difference between tolerances and clearances. Clearances is literally the gap between something. Tolerances is when you spec something, so you say a shaft wants to be exactly 23 millimeters, how close in mass production you can get to that repeatedly. Any road. So, what is it? Well, it's nickel, uh, nickel, uh, silicon, Silicon, not silicone, silicon, the element, um, carbide. So silic silicon carbide is um, a very, very hard ceramic. The problem is with silicon carbide is that it, because it's a ceramic, it is a very poor electrical conductor. So what you can actually do is you can dissolve um, the silicon carbide in nickel. And once you do that, that makes it basically conductive because nickel's a metal and its, it's conductivity is a hell of a lot better than silicon carbide. <coughs> the reason why you want to do this is because you want to try and electroplate this. So um, there is another way which is what we call um, ignition, um, what do they call it? There's an awesome word for it. But basically what they call ignition coating, which basically means that you explode. <laughs> something um, you explode a substance in just say inside a cylinder and then that explosion splats it's, it's like sputter coating but in a slightly different way use high energy um, arcing and you can basically like sputter coating in a sense but not sputter coating it's very similar the thing is that process is very expensive so you can use silicon carbide and coat things like that if you use, if you dissolve this in nickel, that's the beautiful thing. Is as soon as you've done that, you can then plate it, um, electroplating wise, um, which makes it a hell of a lot cheaper. Which made it a lot more accessible to use on just normal road bikes and stuff like that, and race bikes and stuff, and all the rest of it. Um, it has a very low coefficient of friction compared to just rubbing. Uh, aluminium against aluminium. We looked before aluminium on aluminium's of coefficient of friction of is it 1.05 something like that to to uh, 1.08. And I don't know. I should have looked it up really. I don't know the uh, coefficient of friction for silicon carbide. I imagine it's around about 0.5 around that region. But that is just a complete guess. Um, so what happens is, is that you coat it, but the, it's not the nickel that we really want. So when your engine starts to run, this is why, this is another reason why you want to do not a soft braking, just a braking, but not a hard one. Is that you have to allow the rings to bed into your cylinders. And basically what happens is, is the nickel in a sense gets wiped away. <coughs> and what you're left with is this silicon carbide. Um, uh, ceramic coating basically. Uh, why do we want to do this? Well it means that we can have cylinders that are a lot tighter tolerances. Because it's a thin layer its thermal expansion is very well understood and the thinner you have something um, the more control and clearances you can have from your thermal expansion. Um, which basically means we can have tighter clearances in our cylinders which means our peak pressure goes up because we're not getting as much blow by. And the other thing is as well is when we were talking about piston slap and all the rest of it, when your uh, piston hits something like cast iron, cast iron is, got a, is a very good bearing surface material, um, but it's all about hardness, is this, you know, this friction, this wear. It's all about what material you're rubbing against what material. And the fact of the matter is, is cylinders 
cylinder banks especially cost a fucking shitload more than a piston. So you'd much rather your piston your rings wear, because in a sense they're the bearing surface in all of this. Um, as in the bearing, as in the wearable, replaceable part. You want a, the, the, the cheaper thing to wear out uh, more than the expensive thing, that's a way to put it. And um, your cylinder banks are seriously expensive compared just because of the size as well. But they're a lot more expensive than your pistons. And pistons, you know, they start to fail for other reasons anyway, you know, basically just if you get close to detonation and stuff. So what you can do is with modern bikes like the SV that has uh, nickel-sil uh, coated um, cylinders, it means that you can actually go more um, over square, which means you're going to have higher, high, uh, higher loadings, side loadings, um, but because you've got this higher, harder surface, this harder wearing surface, this nickel-sil coated cylinder, that you don't have to worry about that as much. If you were looking at it from a design point of view, if you were to run just cast iron sleeves, cast iron sleeves are also heavier, yeah, that's a consideration as well, but not so much as this side loading. Um, you know, you could run uh, over square engines in cylinder liners, uh, steel cylinder liners or cast iron cylinder liners. The fact of the matter is your engine isn't going to last as long as people are used to. You know, bike should easily last 100,000 miles where if you just had a cylinder liner that's cast iron or steel, it's going to start to egg shape a lot sooner. So that's a restriction there. You see, if you want to go more and more over square, then you need something to be able to resist that. You know, and we're not too bothered about, you know, replacing pistons and piston rings where you'd be really fucked off if every 25 or every 50,000 miles you have to replace an entire cylinder bank. <coughs> it does become a bit of a problem, this though, when you want to um, have your cylinder line, you know, basically you, you know you have egg shape your cylinders. It's a bit more expensive in that respect. Instead of just popping out a line, or pop, popping some new ones on and having them bored. Um, there, there is another way you can do this as well. Oh, this kind of nickel still kind of replace that. There was a, a, a bit in the um, 60s and 70s where we were hard chroming um, cylinders, which again hexavalent chromium, pandas, lesbians, and all that shit. Um, but even then, it's hard. this is harder than hard chromium on the uh, Rockwell scale and stuff like that. So, yeah, cylinder, uh, coating cylinder liners is a wear thing. Thermal conductivity characteristics are better than liners for the simple fact is that they are thinner. Uh, you know, this coating, we're talking 100 microns, maybe a lot less than that, maybe 50 microns, where a cylinder liner has to have structural rigidity, so it has to be, you know, quite... A, three or four millimeters thick and aluminium is a hell of a lot better heat conductor than cast iron or a steel liner so with these cylinders even though the nickel isn't its heat its heat conductivity isn't as good um, it doesn't matter because it's a lot thinner so comparatively the heat um, conductivity of these cylinders as a cylinder package versus a cylinder package the nickel wins out Hope that makes sense. We'll actually do some um, testing and stuff like that in the future. Buy some nickel cylinders and uh, pop one out. Oh no, we'll bore out. We'll get two cylinders. Fuck it, just get it right. We'll get two cylinders. We'll bore one out and put a sleeve in it. We'll just leave that one nickel. We'll rev the shit out of it and see if we can see any difference over time. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.